Hello everyone, this is Jay Dobbins on the Marvel DC Multiverse. We are now on episode 425, and I'll be doing a review on Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. So, spoiler alert, if you have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3, I strongly suggest that you not listen to this episode. You've been warned. So, um, of course, it starts off, the move starts off. And at their new headquarters on Nowhere, the Guardians of the Galaxy are attacked by Adam Warlock, a sovereign warrior created by their high uh, priestess, Aisha. Uh, after um, Adam uh, critically wounds Rocket, he is stabbed by Nebula and flees. The Guardians cannot heal Rocket's wounds with their uh, med packs due to a kill switch embedded in him by Argo Corp, a company helm uh, by a mad scientist and Rocket's creator, the High Evolutionary. The Guardians uh, travel to Argo uh, Corp's headquarters to find the kill switch over quick, the kill switch override code and save Rocket's life. As Rocket lies unconscious, he recalls his past. As a baby raccoon, he was experimented on by the High Evolutionary who sought to enhance a an anthropomorphize sorry, por, sorry, an anthropomorphize animal life forms to create an ideal society called Counter Earth. So, um, Rocket befriended his fellow batch, um, 89 test subjects, the otter, Layla, Lila, uh, yeah, Lila, the walrus, Teefs, and the rabbit, Floor. The high, the high evolutionary was impressed by Rocket's rapidly growing intelligence, but became furious once it exceeded his own. Uh, the High Evolutionary used used uh, used Rocket to perfect his animal creations. Then planned to harvest Rocket's brain to further research and exterminate the Absolute Batch eighty nine. Rocket frees his friends, but the High Evolutionary kills Ly Lila. In rage, Rocket moles uh, the high, high evolutionary, which, you know, he had that coming anyway. He pretty much had that coming. Didn't feel bad for him either. Um, but his henchman kills Teeth and Floor, Teeth and Floor, during a firefight with Rocket before the latter flees Counter Earth in a spaceship, of course. In the present, the Ravengers, led by an alternate version of Gamora, help the Guardians infiltrate Orgo Corp. Um, they retrieve Rocket's file, but discover that the code was removed, with the likely culprit being Thiel, one of the High Evolutionary's advisors. So, the Guardians, along with Gamora, depart for counter earth to find him um, they are followed by Aisha and Adam of course warlock um, the, high the high evolutionary revealed to be their racist creator as he threatened to wipe out the sovereign if they fail to retrieve rocket um, let's see the guardians reach counter earth and are guided uh, to the Arate Laboratories complex. Drax and Mantis remain with Gamora and Rocket as Peter Quill, Groot, and Nebula travel to Arate. Arate, whatever you call it. So Nebula is forced to wait outside by guards as Quill and Groot enter Arate, while Drax tricks Mantis into pursuing Quill's, uh, pursuing Quill's group. Gomorrah saves Rocket. Uh, 
sorry, saves Rocket from being captured by Adam and Warpig. An experiment of the high, high evolutionary. Question by Quill, the high, the high evolutionary, admits disillusionment with the Animans perfect society, imperfect society. He destroys Counter-Earth to kill the Animan and start anew. Aisha is killed in the process as Adam attempts to save her. Um, Arete departs as a spaceship with Drax... Nebula and Mantis boarding uh, to rescue Quilt and Groot, um, who instead escape Arate with Feel, retrieving the code from his corpse while rescued by Gamora in their in their ship. Um, as Quill's group um, uses the code, Rocket in, uh, instead flatlines and. and has a near-death experience where, where he uh, reunites with Lila, Lila, Tiefs, and Floor. Lila uh, tells him that his time has not yet come as Quill restarts Rocket's heart. The code uh, disables the kill switch, allowing Rocket, around, allow, sorry, allowing for Rocket's healing. Drax, Nebula, and Mantis encounter hundreds of genetically engineered humanoid children on, on Arete before being captured. The other Guardians stage a rescue mission leading to a battle against the high, high evolutionary forces. Which of course is going to be added to my Ultimate Fights collection on my YouTube series. In, in my YouTube series. Okay, um, so Kraglin fires on Arete with nowhere dooming Arate he later uh, he later um, saves nowhere citizens from an attack intent on retreating the high evolutionaries the high evolutionaries, uh, the high evolutionaries underlings uh, mutiny and kills them all pretty much um, Drax, Nebula, and Mantis face and befriend three monstrous obeliscus, sorry, obelisk, to escape and reunite with Quill's group. Uh, the Guardians delay, leaving Arate, choosing to rescue the children who escape to nowhere via Cosmo's, um, telekinetic tunnel, connecting nowhere to Arete. Um, Rocket discovers imprisoned animals on a ship before being attacked by the High Evolutionary, but, um, the other Guardians help subdue him, and Rocket spares him, leaving him to go down with the ship. So the Guardians, uh, rescue the animals to nowhere. Quill nearly dies trying to cross over, but is saved by Adam, who had a change of uh, heart after being saved by Gruton from Arete. Um, in the aftermath, Quill decides to leave the Guardians, naming Rocket as captain. Quill travels to Earth to reunite with his grandfather, Jason Quill. Mantis embarks on a journey of self-discovery with the Obelisk. Gamora reunites with the Ravengers, and Nebula and Drax remain on nowhere to raise the rescue children. In a mid-credit scenes, the new Guardians, uh, consisting of Rocket, Groot, Kraglin, Cosmo, Adam, Fela, one of the rescue children, and Adam's pet Blurp, uh, they take on a new mission, of course. Well, in the post credit scene, uh, Peter Quill is, I guess, eating breakfast with his grandfather. Uh, I'm not going to lie. This movie had me teared up pretty much. I was in tears, literally. You know, because, you know, because of, um, 
of Rocket's backstory. You know, him making friends. It was, I thought it was very touching. And then when Lila died, you know, that had me in tears too because, you know, Rocket, that was Rocket's, that was Rocket, Teefs and Floor and Lila were Rocket's only friends. The only friends that he made on that, uh, in, you know, in that, in the headquarters of uh, Orgo Court. And then when she died, you know, when he died, he just lost it and he just mauled. Uh, he's pretty much just mauled, you know, the high evolutionary, which he had a coming though. I mean, I didn't, I didn't feel bad for him either. And then it turns out, yeah, he had to get surgery and he has, his face was pretty much a mask to hide his real, you know, face because he was toe up when uh, Rocket mauled him. But yeah, you know, when Lila died, I was in tears. I was in tears, and then his friends died too, so he was pretty much alone. And him, I mean, the way they conducted the experiments on him, according to Nebula, what happened to Rocket was worse than what Thanos did to her. So, but yeah, I ain't gonna lie, it had me emotional, you know. The kids, the, you know, Rocket's friends dying. Because, you know, Layla was innocent. You know, she didn't deserve to die. And I was very heartbroken and teared up over that. So, there was a lot of emotion to this movie. Um, I, I can't say it was well written, but it was interesting. You know, when I watch it again, you know, I would definitely watch it again on Disney+. Plus. But, you know, it's just Layla, you know, it's just Layla's character. You know, Layla is what really touched my heart, really. And Rocket's friends, you know. They were experimented on and, you know, how they were experimented on was messed up. But at the same time... You know, they made, you know, they, you know, they were friends, you know, they bonded, you know, build a relationship. And then next thing you know, they get killed by the higher evolution. Lila gets killed by the higher evolutionary while Teefs and Floor are killed by the high, the high evolutionary's henchmen. I mean, they were, of course, uh, Teefs and Floor were avenged already because the, the henchmen that killed them were killed by Rocket. And then, of course, there was one loose end, which was the high, the high evolutionary. So once he died along with the ship, he was pretty much avenged. I mean, sorry, he, no, not he was not avenged. Lila's death was avenged, pretty much. So either the way, Rocket's friends were avenged. So I was pretty happy about that part. But it still sad me that they had died. So, so yeah, that's, this was the only Marvel movie that had me teared up, pretty much. So, but I'm not going to, I mean, I think James Gunn did do a good job. Question is, will he do a better job with DC? Only time will tell. So, uh, yeah, this is the final chapter of uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy, so, well, so, um, don't know if, uh, they will be in previous movies or not, but, um, as far as the Guardians of the Galaxy series, that chapter is closed. But, yeah, um, yeah, it was, it was interesting, you know. I'm not gonna say it's a masterpiece, because I'll be lying if I did say that, but... Uh, you know, it looks it, you know, interesting. I give it a, um, yeah, I will give it a eight out of 10, to be honest. So, but, um, or, well, 8.9 out of 10. But anyway, um, yeah, the movie has made, so far has made $400 million with the production budget of $250 million. So, just wanted to make sure I put that out there. But anyway, um, that concludes this review. Feel free to visit us. Sorry, feel free to uh, follow us on Instagram. And we're available on iTunes, Google Play Music App, Spotify, and of course, YouTube.